The procurement process within the construction industry can be a minefield, particularly for SMEs when it comes to tendering and bidding for contracts within the public sector. But could there be any change on this? Well, to find out, joining me here on Construction Talk today is Steve Vickers from the Whimsy Board, and hopefully we'll be able to unravel and demystify the process. Well, welcome to Construction Talk, Steve. Thank you for joining us. Now, the th first thing I actually want to ask is why has it been such a hard process for SME? I think often the perception is worse than the fact, and lots of SMEs feel that this is an uphill struggle and that they really don't get the opportunities they ought to have. I would actually argue that most of this is because they don't prepare well in advance. And actually, a lot more preparation and taking it seriously would make a real difference to them. Is there anything in particular that they need to do to prepare themselves then for the tendering process? I think often it's very much about making sure that they have the basic material available and that it's up to date. All too often it's left until probably one or two days before they need to complete documentation that they're scrambling to try and find that. That leaves them in a disadvantaged position and actually often the material is inappropriate, not applicable to the project that they're actually either tendering for or in fact that it's out of date and no longer valid. I think the biggest issue has been that those larger companies have the skills and ability very often because of the resources available to them to be able to put good quality documentation together. It's not seen very often by smaller SMEs um, as being that important to them, although it's obviously absolutely vital. They, they see it getting in the way of the day job, and actually this is the day job, and without it they haven't got a job at all. I mean, I would imagine that if they don't actually put the work in to get the, the clients, they're not going to have anything in the future to actually work towards. And, and that is a real issue, and I think for many of them, though, they don't put that time and effort in and don't see it as something they should be doing on a very regular basis. They wait until they get an opportunity before they start to look at it. They actually ought to be preparing regularly, making sure their documents are up to date, that they're actually finding the things that they need to comply with and making sure their company can do that. I know a lot of SMEs, they struggle to get public sector contracts. So what is it exactly that they need to be doing? I think some of it is very basic. In fact, that what they don't often do is read the documents well. They will apply for things that they actually don't meet the criteria, so either their turnover is insufficient or they don't have the current experience for the sector of work they're going into. They need to look at that before they actually waste resources bidding. But then often when they do um, go into the bidding round and filling in PQQs, they often will spend time trying to embroil them with things that actually the client hasn't asked for. What I would say to them is stick to the material that is required of them, make sure it's accurate and that they complete it, um, but don't try and actually put things in that the client isn't asking for. Can you give me a uh, worst example in your, uh, in your experience? I think what, what I've seen is many times people filling in PQQs and they're from either companies that are specialists, let's say, in joinery manufacturing and we're asking for a tender for roofing, or you've got companies that are actually saying, well, I, um, I'm interested in applying for a project and it's £10 million uh, project, but in fact they've only got a half million pound turnover. They're obviously you know, wasting their time, wasting the procurer's time. And clearly out of their depth. Then, totally out of their depth. But it shouldn't actually put them off that there are large contracts. There are other things they could be doing. It's about making sure that they align their business to the sectors that they're very skilled and experienced in and make sure that those are the things they apply for. I think certainly at central government level they're making it very clear to departments that they want them to actually engage with SMEs. How that filtrates across the rest of the public sector is a lot more difficult. Um, there's obviously local authorities, there are other major public sector organisations, how each of them view that. But I think most um, local authorities in particular would want to see their local businesses achieve success. In order to do that, though, they need to step up to the mark as well. So whilst this may be mandated by central government at the moment mm -hmm. and everyone is building those opportunities, they've actually got to make sure that they can stand up to the, to the mark. 
Earlier on, Steve took part in a procurement meeting at the Orange Studios, where he gave a talk to SMEs about filling out bidding applications, how to win work, and all importantly, how to present yourself at client interviews. So do you think there are any other barriers that come along with this for SMEs? I think very often the barriers are sometimes their perception of applying for public sector contracts. They often see these as because of the value or because they're frameworks for long-term engagement as something not for them. Absolutely, this is a real opportunity for SMEs to win work. And I think that providing they take seriously the bidding process, they put their resource into it, and they actually make sure that their things like you know basic information on their financial standing, they check with their banks, they check their credit ratings, um, but also that they actually can differentiate themselves about what's their added value, what can they do differently and better than their competitors. If they can sell those things to the client, they have every opportunity to win work. So it's about outshining the competition really, is that what you're saying? It is, and to me that is not about glossy brochures. It's very much about how can they demonstrate that they are a local business that can add local value. And that may be by creating jobs, it could be training opportunities, but it's also about delivering excellent work in the locality, employing those local people, they have the knowledge and they can work well with clients. It's about that face-to-face -face contact, about the ability to work closely with their and have a good relationship with their client. It seems to me like it's a communication problem that SMEs currently have. Communication is obviously imperative and sometimes it's perceived as not important to the, their role. They're very good at the delivery of construction. Actually about customer care, customer relationships is something some of them are not that skilled at but they need to understand how important a component that is of the whole process. Actually th that trust the ability to work well with clients is something that will actually stand them in good stead for winning work. So would you say that it's the trust and the communication that will actually give them the opportunities to bid for, or do they have to go in for those opportunities at a different angle as well? I think all of those, they do definitely need to have a different angle. They need to come in and show why they're different, why they're better than the competitors. Most of them are very skilled at doing the, the delivery side of their business. What they need to be able to do is demonstrate that. How can they present that? How can they communicate that to their client? And actually about selling themselves. It's very much about, not, not from the glossy brochure perception again, but very much about the honesty, the trust, the value that they can add to their local client. Okay. I think we should really get down to the nitty gritty really and ask you about do's and don'ts when it comes to tenders. Um, and what your opinion on that would be? Um, I would actually say to them very clearly, make sure they read what's being asked of them in either a PQQ or in a tender document and actually just respond to that. Don't embroil it, don't add to it. Um, absolutely make sure they meet the criteria. All too often they go beyond um, what they can actually deliver in terms of their experience or their turnover. But it's about making sure they can match that criteria. Once they've done that, just stick to the questions that are being asked of them. Certainly less frills and a lot more about this is what we can do for you, this is how we want to do business with you and it's a very much about you can trust us. How do you see the procurement process going from here on in and, and for the future? I think there are two obviously com major components there. One are the SME contractors themselves, the other one are clients. I think there's lots of work to be done to educate clients about streamlining some of the processes, getting back to basics with some of the questions. Only ask questions that are important. Steve Vickers, thank you for joining us. So change of perspective for SMEs would help when it comes to the tendering and procurement process. Less frills and much more common sense and communication. Let's hope they see it this way also. This is Lindsay Rose Masura for Construction Talk. Construction Talk. Hosted by Winsy.